I am Slick Nick, the living legend of hair loss, your personal hairline hero, the red pill pusher of hair loss. And as this little mini series has introduced to the world, I'm also the bro scientist of hair loss. I do not need or wish for favor with the medical community because I am a bro scientist. I am nothing more than some random guy on the internet who has the fourth most popular YouTube channel on hair loss, who happens to have introduced many theories about hair loss to the world. So this I'm making as my fourth and final installment on my Bro Science Hair Loss mini-series. And let's just review. Now, what I said in one of the other videos, I said, if I'm smart, I'll put links to the other videos before so that you can easily find them. But no, I'm too red pill for that. If you really want it, you'll find it. You can watch the other videos. If that's what you really want, you'll find a way to do that. Just like on one of my songs called uh, I Will Find a Way. Uh, I wrote a song about that, talking about in a relationship. You, you'll find a way. There's a t-shirt that says, sorry I was late, I didn't want to come. Exactly. If you want something, you'll find a way to get what you want. So if you want to see the preceding three installments of this series, you will look at the title because I'll probably name it something like Hair Loss Bro Science, one of four, whereas this is four of four. If you care, if you want it, you'll find a way to get there. So what I want to do specifically in this video, just to kind of wrap up the bro science concept. So. This is basically my version of saying, come at me, bro. Debate me, bro. Because I haven't really had many people try to attack my methods here, my theories here. And if no one's saying that they're wrong, it kind of implies that this bro scientist is right. So what people will do is they'll pick apart one little thing and say everything. Nick everything about what you're saying is wrong because this one thing, which my whole theories are based on a group of things. You have to look at the whole picture of the collection. So that means by default their argument is invalid. Or another thing they'll do is they'll just give a black pill response. And then I'll just say, are you MGTOW or are you incel? Which one? Oh, well, I'm black pill. Okay. So I don't respect or value the opinions of black pill at all. So as I'm looking through future comments, your, your opinion means nothing to me if you're black pill. Uh, only if you're blue pill, which means that uh, you're still trying to find a cure for hair loss or, or try to stop it. Or if, if you're red pill, which you realize that ultimately it's not about your hair anyway, it's about the 10 things. So what I wanna do is I wanna run through my theories real quick. And I want you to debunk them. And if you can't successfully do that, you are giving me more credibility as the fourth most popular YouTuber who talks about hair loss and the only of those, even top five, who is red pill, openly, proudly red pill. So your goal is to legitimately negate my theories, prove me wrong collectively. Finding one exception to the rule is not the same as negating my whole theory. So let's go ahead and get started. There's five ways I teach that you can predict if you will go bald. So the five things, number one, how old are you now? Count down how many years it is before your 35th birthday. Look at a mirror, look at your hair now. Do you have actual hair loss? If, if so, how much? Is it aggressive or is it just receding temples, which mean nothing? I made a video on this channel, it's uploaded from a VHS tape, showing you what I look like at age 17 in a video you can see that my temples are receded. And now I'm closer to 40 than I am 39. And I haven't had a hair transplant and I don't take pills for, obviously not, I'm the red pill pusher. I don't believe in big pharma. So how old are you now versus you know, how much hair you have now? You look at a photo of yourself at age one, is it, which is a projection of you at age 35, just a way to further confirm what you're gonna look like at age 35. Then lastly, go back in time and ask yourself, could I grow a full beard by age 18? If so, I'm more likely to go bald. And then on a somewhat related note, what percentage of Asian or Hispanic DNA do I have? Now, don't guess. 
take a DNA test if you don't know for sure, if you speculate that you are, the higher percentage of Asian or Hispanic DNA, the higher likelihood you're not gonna go bald. So negate that. Not just by debunking one, don't say, well, what about Prince William? There's a photo of him on the internet at age one and he had a full head of hair, but then by the time he was 35, he was definitely bald. But see, you've just negated one thing and I've been very clear that the over, the rule over the whole thing is you have to look at the best of five. So to negate my process here, you need to tell me why all five of these are wrong. You have to prove to me that your hair now means nothing, that age 35 means nothing, that age 35 is not a true predictor of whether you are gonna go bald or not because men aggressively go bald before the age of 35, not so much after. That's why when black pills leave comments saying, I'm gonna be bald by the time I'm 40, I'm like, well, that's like how many months away? Like four? And you've been saying that for five years now? I was already 35 at that point. So you have to negate the whole 35 concept. But again, I'm not saying that all men go bald by age 35. I'm saying most. This is all general. So like, for example, the, I could, for example, have diffuse thinning on my 30th, my 40th birthday, and even though my hairline wouldn't necessarily go back, I could thin out. That could happen. But in most cases, most men who have this much hair by their 35th birthday tend not to aggressively go bald. So this is a very general thing, but just because it's general doesn't mean it's valid. Of course, and then lastly, you'd have to be able to prove me wrong too that it tends to be that hairier guys go bald sooner. Well, like, you just negated your own rules. Nope, because the best out of five, I have one strike against me out of these five, and the last one being, are you of Asian or Hispanic DNA? And I definitely am. About 22, 21% of me is Native American, Mayan, Aztec, that, that uh, background there. So my thing is, look at all five of those things, prove them collectively all wrong, and then we can say that Nick's bro science is false, it's bogus, it's no good. But no one, not one person, has been able to knock down my five-step system, looking at all five collectively, knowing that in general, they tend to be right. But collectively, the best out of five is gonna tell you. For me, it was four out of five. I didn't get five out of five, I got four out of five as the guy who's not bald by age 35. Now lastly, we've got the 10 things. Now my bro science teaches that ultimately focus on what you can control, which are the 10 things. So negate this. If we talk about the halo effect, right? I say you create your own halo effect. So if you're a guy who appears to be confident, you respect women and fellow men, you find your identity in your unique skill set. You're healthy and fit. You're decisive. You're committed. You're a leader. You're a good communicator. You have a sense of humor and you're emotionally intelligent. In other words, you don't let other people control your emotions. You only use your emotions when necessary and never in, in connection with being disrespected, having your feelings hurt or offended. So can we agree that if a man focuses on those 10 things, by default, he's going to be more liked and attractive whether he's bald or not. So that's what I'm asking you. Come at me, bro. Debate me, bro. Totally prove that this is invalid and it's not right without exposing yourself as a black pill. And if you can do that, then I'll be impressed. If you can't do that, collectively as an audience, you are all further reinforcing that this bro scientist knows what he's talking about.